Okay, everyone, so now that we've done an example, we went through and we did all the loads for that school in Chicago, where you guys are gonna come into play is you guys are gonna do this for the Keystone Library. So if you look, it's gonna be the exact same kind of thing. You're gonna have selecting a, a appropriate F, F uh, roof type deck to open steel web joists for the Keystone Library. First thing you're gonna do, find the snow load. So very similar to like what we did, you're gonna end up going through and doing the exact same thing. Find that I factor, find that, and again, don't forget to check the minimum snow loads. Is that snow load greater than or equal to 20 PSF? If it is, you gotta do that second calculation we did in number one to account for large snow events. So given where Noblesville is at, you might go through and need to check that. Okay, again, um, here, find the live, and number two says find the roof live loading required by IBC. Most likely it's gonna be the same because you're gonna do, we're gonna assume that this is a flat roof on the top, but here we're gonna end up having, um, you know, you're gonna have to find out what all the dead load is too. Number three, determine the total design load. Number four, select a steel roof deck to a double span to support the loads. Note, you may specify single, double, or triple spans for roof decking depending upon the installation and cost of each one. And number five, you're gonna determine the roof beam loading for both interior and exterior beams. And then you're gonna choose your open web steel joists. For now, use only the top load values in the table and ignore the live load deflection load values. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna end up doing is, uh, so I'll have this be a file upload. I will want you to answer these conclusion questions. This document is also, this is for your for your library. So keep in mind, this is the area that you're looking at, okay? So the roof live load up here is what you're looking at. And the span is right here. So it's not 30. Remember, your tributary width is looking at five foot, okay? So that's the thing for the Keystone Library. That'll be with your tributary width. For your interior beams will be five foot. Your exterior beams will be two and a half. So just be careful as, as you go along and do that. But the 30 foot uh, uh, spaces here will be for the, for the span that those, that those have to be, okay? And, and again, 30 foot is actually going in this direction. 24 foot is gonna be where you're gonna be choosing. This is how long the beams are, 24 foot, okay? So make sure, I'll put that over here at the side. Make sure that you're looking at this really carefully and think about remember these are the these are the things that you're that you're picking out so not these so these are the girders we're picking out these beams right here so tributary widths at five, five foot the spans on these guys are going to be 24 foot so that's the length of those beams okay so again do the calculation for the keystone library very similar to what we just did with that school in chicago um, if you got questions, make sure you message me and also don't forget, you know, you can do the do the calculations right in this document electronically for the uh, assignment, but also don't forget your conclusion questions. But if you want to do this on paper, take pictures and then upload it to uh, up to upload it to the assignment. I'm perfectly OK with that as well, because I know not everybody's going to have their engineers notebooks. Not everybody's going to have orthographic paper. So if you do it, do it on regular notebook paper or anything like that, that is perfectly OK. So. Uh, just wanting to try to get another lesson in for e-learning that would be something we would have done after spring break. So again, message me with questions during virtual office hours if you have anything, and I'll do my best to get back to you, uh, make sure that we get everything taken care of.